Hey guys, this is Edgaras from Spoken Lithuanian here with you today. And in this lesson, we're going to learn how to use simple sentence structure in Lithuanian language. Okay, so we will learn whether or not the sentence structure even matters, how to use it, how to stress the words in the sentence to give out the clear meaning of what you want to say. So after this lesson, you will learn how to properly use Lithuanian language sentences. And if Lithuanian language words and phrases is something that you need, uh, I've created this audio and PDF book that you can find on the link, www.spokenlithuanian.com slash 117 phrases. You will find the link somewhere below the video, so be sure to click it, uh, and you will be able to subscribe to my newsletter, and you will, can download this audio and PDF book directly into your um, phone or computer and just listen through it there. I'm sure it will help you. So let's get back to our main lesson today. The first sentence that I want you to do is just simple I am. And I am in Lithuanian would be ash eso. I stands for ash. Am is a form of verb to be, which is in this case ash eso, right? I am ash eso. Good. Now he is, he is. We have yes ira, yes ira. He is yes ira, yes ira. Now the word, a different word, different form of the verb to be we have here is ira, right? Ira, yes ira. Ash aso, that's I am, but he is yes ira. Now I eat, for example, if we take a verb to eat, I eat would be ash valgo. Ashvalgo. Just simply Ashvalgo. Now, if you want to say he eats, he eats, you say yes, valgo. Valgo. Yes, valgo. Now you have a different ending here. Oh, valgo. Valgo. Ashvalgo. Yes, valgo. Yes, valgo, right? He eats. Now, a fish in Lithuanian language is žuvis. Now, the gender of this word is uh, feminine gender. And in this particular case, this word žuvis, uh, because of the ending, we have it in the nominative case. Basically, nominative case is just a, a subject. It answers the question just what? What? Just simply what? Žuvis. A fish. Right? Žuvis. Je vis, je vis, a fish. Now, to eat a fish, right, if I want to say it. Now, if you watch my previous lessons, you will remember that if we have um, to eat, which is infinitive version of the verb, right? To eat, what to do. In Lithuanian, we have valgi t. We have the t ending, which means that it's infinitive. Valgi t. Valgi t, right? But you can see here that we already have a different ending here because to eat a fish, now for the word fish, in this case, you have a accusative case. It's like a direct object of the sentence. To eat what? You see, in English, it also answers the question what, but it's a different one in, um, in Lithuanian language. It answers the question ka, ka. Because you're not uh, directly participating, the fish is not directly participating in the sentence, right? It's being eaten. And in this case, we have accusative case. Žuvi. Valgiti žuvi. Okay? To eat fish. Valgiti žuvi. Now, I eat fish. I would say ašvalgo. And I would use this accusative case. Ašvalgo what? I eat fish, ašvalgo žuvi, ašvalgo žuvi, I eat fish, ašvalgo žuvi, good, I hope you're getting so far, ašvalgo žuvi, now, Peter eats fish, Peter eats fish, Patras valgo žuvi, Patras, by the way, is the Lithuanian version of the name Peter, Patras valgo žuvi. Now we have the valgo ending because patras is basically he, yes. It's just we have a, in this case, we have a name 
instead of a pronoun. Patras valgo žuvi. Patras valgo žuvi. Okay, so we have this, now we understand the basic sentence of why we have this case, right? Why we have the valgo ending. Now you understand how to compose a sentence like that. Only with just these words, okay? But now if we want to make a sentence order, and this is the most fun part in Lithuanian language, you can actually do it either way when it comes to a simple a simple sentence like that. Now in the future, I will make a lesson with more complex sentences. But if you have a, just a simple sentence like that, you can make a structure whichever way you want. You can have it Patras Valgo Žuvi. You can have it Patras Žuvi Valgo. You can have Žuvi Valgo Patras. Žuvi Patras Valgo, Valgo Patras Žuvi, or Valgo Žuvi Patras. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Now, the most common way of saying it is just Patras Valgo Žuvi. And you would have uh, some sort of variations depending on what you want actually want to emphasize, right? In, in this case, for example, Patras Žuvi Valgo, you would usually emphasize the last word. That means that Patras is not doing anything else with the fish, it's just eating it, right? And in this case, Žuvi uh, Valgo Patras, it's as if you would emphasize the word Patras that nobody else is eating the fish, right? Patras is eating the fish, right? But what you can do actually is in the sentence, you can emphasize whichever word you want. Even this first one, you can say Patras Valgo Žuvi. So nobody else is eating the fish. By the way, you remember that in Lithuanian language, when I say Patras Valgo Žuvi, it can mean either Patras is eating a fish, and it can also mean Patras eats fish, like common, like a common thing for him. So it, both of those things, it doesn't matter in this case. So Patras Valgo Žuvi, if I say Patras Valgo Žuvi, I'm emphasizing Žuvi, it means that Patras is not e eating anything else, or doesn't eat anything else, just fish. If I'm saying Patras Valgo Žuvi, I emphasized Valgo word, that I'm emphasizing the, that uh, he is eating it, not doing anything else with it. And if I emphasize Patras, I'm em emphasizing that Patras is eating, nobody else. So you can see that when you have a simple sentence structure like that, you can actually let go of your fear that you will make a mistake because you won't. In some cases, uh, especially in the last case, when you put the verb at the beginning, it may sound a little bit like, uh, you know, like um, in English language, the equivalent would be Shakespearean language, right? Uh, you have this old school English uh, that is a little bit inverted English. So it would sound something a little bit like that, but it's not a big mistake. It's not even a mistake. It's just actually not a way that people speak uh, Lithuanian language today, but you can use all of these versions. Just remember that the most usual one is when you have a subject, then you have an action that a subject performs, and then you have a direct object of that action. What is being eaten in this case, which is the fish, žuvi, vatras valgo žuvi and not something else. And let's look one, at one more example. For example, to have, right? Now, to have, we had this um, verb in the last um, lesson, so make sure to watch that. I have top 10 main verbs in Lithuanian language and their forms in present tense. But to have basically means turiete in Lithuanian language. Turiete, turiete. We have the t ending once again because we have the infinitive form, right? Turiete. To have, turiete. Good. Now, I have, you will have a different en ending, ashturio. Ashturio. I will, I promise you, I will make a, a lesson about all of these endings. Why, for example, ashvalgo, o ending, and in this case, I have ashturio, u ending, different ending. I will explain this. Now, in, for this, for this particular time, just bear in mind that we're using just these words with these forms and, and not try to think too much of how they work. I have in this case a studio. Now we're just looking at the sentence structure. I have an apple. A studio oboli. Now you can see that okay, we had the Jovi and we have oboli 
direct object, accusative case. Because in nominative case, it would just be obolis, obolis, like we had juvis, juvis and juvi, obolis and oboli, okay? So if I have this word, like a sentence like that, I have an apple, ashturu oboli, again, I can use it in every, any way possible. Turu ash oboli, I can put turu first. I can put oboli first. Oboli ashturu, ashturu oboli. Uh, or oboli turu ash. It doesn't matter. Just remember that the most common way to do it is this. You have the subject, which is ash, I. You have the action, which is turu. And you have the direct object of the sentence. I don't have, I'm not saying that I have anything else. I have an apple, direct object, oboli, accusative case. Okay, ashturu oboli. So there you have it. A very simple lesson, basically just, uh, it's a freeing lesson. I'm letting you use whichever uh, sentence structure you want because in simple sentences like that, you can do it and it's fine. You will, you may sometimes sound weird to a Lithuanian language um, speaker, you know, but but um, it doesn't matter because you can use it, you know, whichever way. And we Lithuanians are very welcoming when somebody tries to speak our language. So don't worry. Know the correct way, the, not not the correct, but the most common way, which is this. But also know that if you mix the order a little bit with a simple sentence like that, it doesn't matter. It's it's fine. And as I said before, if you haven't already, download the audio and PDF book that I've created, which will help you learn Lithuanian language immensely because I've compiled 117 phrases that we use in everyday language, you know, that you can use on the street when you're talking to people, somebody you know when you want to ask something, you will find all of these phrases. So be sure to press on the link. Um, join my newsletter, and you will, you will be sent this audio and PDF book directly into your email. So thank you for this lesson. I hope it was useful. I hope it was interesting. Uh, as I said, I will be posting these lessons every week. So if you have some specific problem with, with Lithuanian language, just let me know in the comments and I will try to, to address this problem. I would, will try to create a lesson about this problem and help you solve this problem once and for all, you know, and, and to learn Lithuanian language as fast as possible. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.